I have 624 individual cards, 74% of all Super Nintendo USA releases. There's also some obscure peripherals. 11, 12, 13, 14. One of the things I always like to get was ridiculous and crazy controllers. Yeah, this looks like Harvest Moon. Six Space Invaders games. Super Noah's Ark 3D. These are super collectible nowadays. I think it's like a game G. Jun SNES, Jun SNES. Jun SNES. Frankie, today we're talking about one of the rarest pieces in my Super Nintendo collection, the Max Gun. We're starting off with a bang. Starting off with a bang, yes. We've talked about this on Scavenger Hunt before. They we have. have seen it. What this was used for was uh, army training. We um, should play it sometime. That sounds like some content. We're actually going to try to use this today. Now, I have never plugged this in. Talk about the game as well, which is another rare component. Jump with a gun. Junt with a gun, a rare sight indeed, with the Super Nintendo cable on it. Yeah, it does disarm. <laughs> I think it's actually a real, uh, it's a Jagger, what is it? Uh, I should look it up. Gun. Uh, Jagger AP-74. It's mechanically disabled, but it is actually a real gun. The trigger mechanism is completely altered for this custom application because it triggers the Nintendo controller. It's got a little sensor inside, and we've got our light pipe up here. What that does is you shoot it at your little TV. Yep that senses of the position of where you are on the TV and determines where you're shooting. It's like when a hick is irritated by what he's seeing on the news. Yes. He's like, eh, hell yeah. <laughs> This was actually one of the last things I bought because these, even at the time, didn't come up very often at all. How'd you even know of its existence? So there was this famous article in Nintendo Power that actually shows the gun and shows someone in the military shooting it. From there, it became kind of a legendary accessory. After these were used for their designated purposes, they ended up in army surplus. At the time that I bought this one, it was a really rare thing on eBay, and I paid a lot of money for it. For the gun, it was about $600. Maybe there's 100 total that were ever made, and a lot of them were probably destroyed. This is your crown jewel. This is, this is one of the crown jewels of the collection, for sure. When I posted our set on Reddit, Someone actually commented from the military services in which they said they had actually used one. Whoa. And they said it sucked. <laughs> they said it was incredibly difficult to get the accuracy right, even when it was properly calibrated. Just because something is rare does not mean it's good. That's right, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe the reason it's rare is because they threw most of them out because they didn't work. Right. There were several custom cartridges, and this is the one that I have. Uh, and this was also a big expense. I think this was around $350. This is one of the rare Super Nintendo cartridges, probably in the hundreds in terms of total quantity. What does it say? Uh, it says Max, multi which is multi-purpose arcade combat simulator. Version 1.1e, copyright 1993, Sculptured Software Incorporated. The military went to Nintendo and said, can you help us with like virtual training? And then Nintendo hired Sculptured Software. That's right. To develop. Who made a bunch of games. And then who do you think made the gun? Just Nintendo? I think some company must have, but I don't, I have no idea which company. I wonder why outside of Nintendo Power, Nintendo didn't try to like market this more because they're like not only are we a video game but we're helping people kill i think that there's there was a bit of a like a disconnect between nintendo's messaging at the time which was really pro kids kid focused especially around that time and in then which, <laughs> or, and this which you know, is basically <laughs> yeah because i don't see no orange cap on the end no of this there thing. should be an orange cap on it well i guess it'd be weird if like actual military guys were playing with a gun that had an orange cap on it oh yeah there's a small orange Doodling. Yeah, it's pretty far down, though. Yeah. You think there's public paperwork that shows that Nintendo was involved? This is a licensed Super Nintendo game. This isn't like an off-brand. Again, probably one of the, the rarest licensed games there is. Also on the back here, we have a, a sticker, Omega Training Group Incorporated. I wonder if they were the ones who actually put the guns together. This was the world, or in this case the military, kind of too hopeful about the state of where we were with video games and VR. Yes. They were kind of like, well, if you can interact with a TV screen, yeah. you can do it all. I mean, I'm sure now we have pretty good simulators. Probably, I, I really don't know. This was not seen as a particularly effective training device. It was ahead of its time. Well, I kind of want to be like, did you guys ever play a Super Nintendo game? Have, <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you noticed that it's it's not 3D? Like Mario Kart is pretty good with its auto scaling. <laughs> and that's about where we're at right now. Yeah, this was before the time of 3D. This was 1993, which was even pretty early in the Super Nintendo's life. All right, well, look, I want to play this 
thing. We're gonna give it a try. It could be completely dead. I have no idea. Well, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. All right, so we've got the game set up. We got it set up and the cartridge is running. We've invited our friend Keith onto the show. Uh, Keith, also a, a Super Nintendo enthusiast. Yeah, enthusiast. We grew up together and you're kind of part of my mental image of childhood <laughs> in video games. Yeah, absolutely. And you're a big gamer to this day. Till this day. Yes. Yeah. It says pull the trigger to continue. Yes. Basic rifle marksmanship training, pull trigger to continue. Okay. You're getting a little slideshow on how to hold a gun. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have never in my life fired a real gun. <laughs> um, and this is heavy like a so real gun. So you should gun. follow the instructions. Yeah, follow the steady position, aiming, All right. breath control, trigger squeeze. That's a hip shot. You don't want to do that. The, the way I've seen it demonstrated is you kneel down and you've got the gun up on your shoulder because okay. you're, you're sighting through the sight, which is right up here. So I'm a right-handed guy, so I guess like this, yeah? Yeah, maybe I, I again. first three shots establish zero aim at center of mass and watch the recoil prepare, prepare to, to fire. fire prepare to are fire. you prepared assume a supported position fire one shot per target targets are untimed okay Invalid shot group, try again, light pen, adjustment may be required <laughs> Light pen light pen. This is the light pen Invalid shot group. Try what does again. that mean? It means you're completely missing the targets, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else try it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Prepare to fire. It sort of reminds me of, you know, like the military like invests in things like Second Life. Like these immature technologies where it's like maybe... Somebody thought this was a really good idea. Invalid shot <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's not possible. Keith was trying the old duck hunt thing. You can't do it. Do you want to try it? Invalid shot. <laughs> and I thought my aim was pretty good. As you move it around, it's doing that flashing edges yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, finding the position of the thing. Consider the fact that this was designed to be done with a nine inch TV. And these targets are already tiny. So the thing that's surprising me the most actually is how the JFK thing was covered up the way it was. <laughs> <laughs> this, how accurate this would have had to be. It does not seem like a good training tool. No. <laughs> no. I can't say that it continued into the next generation consoles. No. It doesn't give you any kind of indication like where you're shooting it at all. It just sucks. Any kind of light pipe game, normally you shoot and it shows you where you shot. Yeah. This doesn't show you at all. You don't know until you get invalid shot group try again. No. I can't imagine anything more frustrating. Maybe it's just a badly designed game to begin with. What's it coming? Maybe I paid a thousand dollars in 2008 for a piece of junk. Confirmed. <laughs> it gives us some additional options, like easy shot group. I think we should have an easy shot group. Yes, please. You have options for wind, and you can also specify the wind direction. But there's an option to calibrate the light pen, so maybe we should do that. So aim at the blue cross and pull the trigger, Keith. Aiming at the blue cross. What the hell's going on? I think it's moving live, yeah. is it? Yeah, it's live. It's live. Oh my god, so it's so it? jittery. Maybe you're too close. Oh, yeah. that's it. Ah, you were, we were a little too close. All right, so let's try a new game. <laughs> and the thing is, why don't they just put the trigger on the screen to show where you shot? <laughs> Frankie, you want to give it one more go? One more Now try. that we can go back to that menu. Oh, you got to be so accurate. Invalid shot group. Do you want to try it? We're gonna have Matt have a try here. Prepare to fire. Invalid shot group in three shots. Two shots. One shot. Invalid shot group. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I think we've got it. I think we, we, we've tried our best. Well, that kind of sucked. I don't think it sucked at all. We figured out that the gun actually works. We went to the calibration screen that so that the light pen even works. I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah, this is we couldn't even play it accurately once. No, but that was what the military said too. So what's coming up on uh, John's Nest? Well, how many Super Nintendos do I have? I really have no idea. We've got the whole collection here. We're gonna scour and find out next time on John's Nest.